For more, let's bring in Turn CEO Amy Burrows. Amy, great to have you with us. Thank you so much for having me, Melissa. So the obesity drug is Turn 601. How does it fit into sort of the landscape here? We've got an, a lot of, you know, candidates out there, oral candidates, including ones um, by Novo as well as Eli Lilly. How does yours fit in and why do you think this could actually be best in class, which, which is what you said in the press release? Yeah, thanks, Melissa. So I know you know a lot about this space. We don't yet have uh, an oral approved therapy. And we also have seen a lot of data from orals to say that we can see effective weight loss. We don't yet have that ideal drug where you see really good tolerability along with that weight loss, something that's very scalable from a manufacturing standpoint and available. I've also heard you talk about uh, you know, different patient segments in this market that different therapies could be appropriate for. So we at Turns don't think that there's going to be one winner in the oral GLP-1 race. Do you, see the, do you see your oral drug being more of a maintenance drug as opposed to the drug that you're on to lose that initial, um, you know, big portion of the body weight that needs to be lost? Yeah, you know, I think people are talking about in that, that in general about orals, and I think it's really going to de depend on the patient and the needs. Okay. Um, talk to us about the phase two. Is it, is it on track to start in 2025? When can we expect a readout? Yeah, it's on track to start um, by early Q2, uh, and you'll see a readout before the end of the year. Okay. You know, last week um, we, we had some stunning news from an IPO in the space, BioAge, um, which halted its phase two. And I know this is not, you know, it doesn't relate to you, but in terms of investors looking at sort of, you know, biotech companies developing drugs, early stages, they see the collapse and they think, why not just go to an Eli Lilly or a Novo Nordisk? Because you can see what happens when a drug is, is halted in, in a, you know, a trial phase. What can you tell investors? Uh, what do you, I'm sorry, can you clarify the question? What do you mean go to Lilly where you can see what happens? Well, Lilly's drugs are a little bit farther out in terms of development. They've got a drug that's already proven on the market, whereas a smaller company is working on drug candidates. They are in uh, clinical trials right now. And you can see what happens when a phase has to be halted because the endpoints are not met or for whatever reason there's an adverse side effect. What can you tell investors about the risks? Because you see a collapse in a, in a company that is also working on an, on an obesity drug in phase two, and, and I'm sure yeah, people yeah. are getting cold feet. I have a lot of respect for my colleagues at BioAge, and it's very sad to see. Uh, I would say that, you know, earlier stage drug development is inherently riskier if you look at the statistics. Uh, and that, uh, but we also know that a lot of drugs and big classes like statins and others, the first to market is not necessarily the best or the winner. So I think there's a lot to be gained in investing in uh, molecules that may be earlier in the pipeline but have the potential to be better. Amy, I think you have about $380 million of cash, cash equivalents. What kind of runway does that give you? We understand that this business is extraordinarily capital intensive. It is capital intensive. It's still very different if you're developing a gene therapy or a biologic. So that cash actually gets us into 2028 um, and into some pretty meaningful milestones, readouts on our leukemia drug, readouts on our obesity portfolio.